Good afternoon. I'm Steve Casey. I professionally work for the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, and I'm pretty sure you're wondering what that relevance has to do with Ideas Week. Um, for me, all of my personal and professional travels live with one lifelong lasting lesson. Be a part of the problem or be a part of the solution. I choose the latter. Um, working at the foundation, we have a simple mission, better the human condition. The combination of those two perspectives balance or round out my idea of social justice and in my opinion that we all have to do our part, whatever that part is. Today I serve as proud co-founder and board president of Food Desert Action, AKA Fresh Moves. We're a 501c3 tax exempt organization with a triple bottom line, financial, environmental, and community foci, whose mission is to create community-based solutions to address the lack of grocery stores in low-income urban neighborhoods here in Chicago. This phenomena, as you've heard, is called food deserts. Uh, 1996 definition from the UK defines it as a areas of relative exclusion where people experience physical and economic barriers to accessing food. I take it more simple. Communities with little or no access to grocery stores or quality or nutritious food choices. Our journey started back in September of 2007 when a colleague of mine, Jeff Penzino, uh, wanted to talk about this report that was launched in 2006 talking about food deserts here in Chicago. It was sponsored by LaSalle Bank. It talked about the correlation between health-related outcomes in those communities and those communities and their, and their issues. It highlighted that there were over 600,000 people at the time living in this thing called food deserts. Sounds like a small call to action. That lunch asked three basic questions. Is the issue really that true? Is it really that dire? And if so, can it be solved? Yes, because I live in Inglewood, and I know what I don't have in my neighborhood. How do my family and I do it? I have one car, but I also have two more, so I can get out and go to the store. Can it be solved? Yes, but it has to be, has to be rethought, rethought in a different way. Um, that third question sent Jeff and I, along with some friends, on almost a four-year-plus journey, looking, trying to create a simple new solution to this simple but yet unsolvable structural issue, access. We organized under the premise that this was a social injustice issue or even possibly a civil rights issue. It helps you frame this differently. Having total unencumbered reliable access to quality affordable fruits and vegetables on a 365 day a year basis. Some of us live in communities where that's not a problem. You can walk to two or three stores. Other communities don't have that option. As we looked at this complex issue, we realized that the standard brick and mortar store was limiting, too expensive, and certainly wouldn't have its impact. During our exploration, we looked at everything from a conventional store, as I mentioned, to a used RV, to a yellow school bus, and even a beer truck. They all had their limitations and challenges. We knew that whatever method that would be chosen would have to, un would have to, would have to, would have to understand and withstand our Chicago winners because we wanted it to still roll, because people still need to eat in the middle of January. We turned our sights then on a Chicago transit bus, because we learned that by federal mandate, all buses across this country are retired every 12 years or 500,000 miles, despite its livable life. Drive by one of CTA's lots, you'll wonder why those buses are sitting there. We wanted a people mover to turn into a produce mover. Call us dreamers. Call us instigators. On May 2011, we rolled out Fresh Moves, the first mobile produce market retrofitted using a full city, city, city transit bus to quickly and effectively bring fresh fruits and vegetables to the Lawndale and Austin community on the west side. Let me give you a snapshot of what we've done to date. We've touched approximately 10,000 customers. We've made almost $70,000 in produce sales. We've moved over 10 and a half tons of fruits and vegetables in this community where they say they don't eat fruits and vegetables. We operate four days a week, making anywhere between 12 to 15 stops out of those 14 day, 14, four days a week. Those stops include elementary schools to high schools, senior buildings, hospitals, clinics, community centers, and even the youth service agency. Inside of some of those elementary schools, we've even taken over the candy bowl and replaced it with tickets to come shop on our bus instead of eating candy inside the school. That's change. Fresh Moves has been the subject of over 100 local and national international stories to date. That's everything from NBC Nightly News to O Magazine, and including Univision for a Spanish-speaking international audience. We do all of this with three sales associates, a driver, and now a recently hired executive director. 
We've even made our way to the White House cookbook, American Grown. We've even been replicated in Memphis, which I found out today, and in Kansas City a month ago. All of this was enough to convince Mayor Emanuel to donate not just one more bus, but two more with the possibility of three, help us find $45,000 from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to help us expand to the south side, and you'll hear about that in the next 30 days. We've created an innovative solution to a dire issue that's plaguing our inner city communities across this country. We've created a solution and made a commitment to solve that issue either that either Big Grocery won't or can't solve. But my passion for this issue goes on. I can keep talking, but my five minutes are up. Thanks. <laughs>